Okay, okay, we're live, eh? What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Saturday. It's Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. How are you guys doing today? A uh, beautiful sunny day here in Creston, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we are loving it. Uh, I just got to turn my sound off on my phone. I keep forgetting to do that. I uh, hear myself I'm on a little delay. How are you guys doing? It is uh, March 17th. 2018. It's a Saturday. Welcome to the two o'clock, the 2 p.m. Eastern time version show for Traveling with Bruce. And uh, today is uh, Saturday trivia. We're talking cruise ship travel trivia today. Got some uh, skill testing questions for you guys. See, we'll put you to work and see how you're uh, if you're sharp and on the on the ball today and not cheating on internet. <laughs> Some of you folks head for that Google. I know you're Googling. You're listening to me, and you're going right to the Google to try to get the answer. And that's not that's not right. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll do the best I can to monitor that. Uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the Saturday edition of the show. Great week this week. Uh, boy, we had uh, what seven shows this week? Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm on at five o'clock uh, every day, and then Tuesday, Thursdays, I throw in a second show, eight o'clock Eastern. And uh, great participation by everybody. Um, got my green on today. I don't know if you can see it all that well, but I'm wearing green today. Happy St. Patty's Day. Uh, here we are. There we go. So I've got my green on. Hope you've got your green on. Um, drinking green beer or whatever you're doing. <laughs> you know, my mom used to love, uh, when, I remember in the 60s, you know, my parents, uh, uh, they became uh, solidly middle class. Uh, they were very poor after the war, uh, both from Europe and G Germany in particular. And uh, in the 50s, uh, my dad worked hard and, uh, uh, you know, kind of started to make it. And in the 60s, my mom and dad uh, became somewhat more comfortable. And uh, that's when the experiments began um, for these cocktails, for these fancy drinks. Because I think, I think that's when the James Bond movies started to show up. And, uh, you know, you're watching movies like Breakfast in Tiffany's or... Or these other Hollywood pictures where you'll see these stars drinking these, you know, fancy cocktails that's you know showed up out of nowhere. And my mother loved to have something called a grasshopper. <laughs> and I remember that drink because it was green. <laughs> and my sister and I were just fascinated by the fact that my mother loved this alcoholic drink called a grasshopper. We never thought a gosh, drink called a grasshopper. And it was green. So I guess it's the perfect drink to have on, on uh, St. Patty's Day <laughs> if you want to be in the spirit of it. But uh, yeah, my dad's bar in 1964, 65 was fully stocked uh, with every imaginable liqueur you could imagine. So if a guest came over and uh, my dad would say, what would you like to have? Anything. Uh, they could, you know, Manhattan or, uh, you know, whatever the drink. My dad had a little book downstairs with all the recipes for all the drinks. He just opened it up and go, oh yeah, a shot of this, shot of that. He had, a, he had everything. Unbelievable. Uh, those are the days where the Beatles uh, made a difference in our lives. Uh, thank you, John Paul, George Ringo, um, because it was because of the Beatles. So my my, my dad uh, made a couple of bucks and uh, it changed our household. I didn't realize it at the time. I was eight and uh, or eight or nine, and it just didn't hit me uh, because I was just too young, just a bit too young. Had I been about 13, 14, I would have realized, oh, my goodness, uh, our, our lifestyle is changing because of the Fab Four. They directly changed the lifestyle of our house. I had no idea, no clue, completely clueless. My dad was a musical instrument salesman, ended up opening a music store, still clueless, still didn't, didn't, didn't put it together. Noticed uh, Beatle albums for sale in the store. Well, that was pretty cool. Still didn't get it. <laughs> it's not until years later when I kind of grew up a bit. I kind of, oh. Oh, that! Oh, that's what happened. Oh, wow, that's cool. And now here we are, 2018, celebrating the uh, you know how many years ago that they released uh, their number one record. And uh, every year we think about them on the Ed Sullivan Show. And oh my gosh, uh, unbelievable. Anyway, quick story there. Uh, hi everybody. If you if you're new to this channel, if you've never been here before. Uh, you're not you're not necessarily coming to a channel where a guy just talks about his memories and his his life uh, you know his life experiences. Uh, this channel, uh, traveling with Bruce, I love to talk about cruise ships and going on cruises and finding deals for cruises and uh, helping people figure out uh, how to uh, how to uh, you know how to pack for a cruise, what you're allowed to take with you on a cruise, how to save money when you're you know looking for a cruise, when you're on the cruise ship, uh, all, all these things. 
and my viewers uh, sign in. I have a bunch of viewers who join me every show. It's fantastic. The list of viewers is growing. They're global. Uh, they're all over the place. And uh, they say hi to me at the beginning of the show here. They tell me where they're watching me from. They tell me what their high temperature is. And I answer questions from viewers like you uh, about going on a cruise. And a lot of you folks uh, who join me are not uh, avid cruisers. They've never been on a cruise before. You're thinking of going on a cruise. You've come to the right channel to talk to me about uh, any questions you have about going on a cruise or finding a cruise or different cruise lines or new ships, old ships, rumors that you've heard, anything like that. If you haven't been on a cruise in 10 years or longer, oh, have things changed since you were last on a cruise ship? Oh my goodness. Uh, the days of the love boat are long gone. Uh, well, well, let's say the hanky panky still continues. I suppose it depends. It depends on who you're with, right? I mean, who you're traveling with, right? But uh, all the activities on the on the ship, things have changed. Uh, you can't do skeet shooting anymore off the back of the uh, off the back of the ship. That they don't offer that service anymore, where they hand you a rifle <laughs> and they sell. They say pull. And then you get to shoot at a at a disc going over the no those days are gone. <laughs> Especially cruises in the Middle East, they don't want you shooting off the back of a cruise ship near Iran or anything like that. No, oh, that's a bad idea. International conventions long killed that little sport off the back of cruise ships. Uh, the other uh, the other event that's gone is you can't shoot golf balls off the back of a cruise ship anymore. You can't put golf balls in the open ocean. They they frown on that from an environmental point of view. They did have golf netting, like cages, golf cages, where you could, you know, hit a hit a seven iron into a into a net. And then they brought in the golf simulators, but that ended also about five ten years ago. A lot of a lot of cruise lines really don't do that much anymore. Uh, the golf game has really died down uh, in popularity on the cruise ship. But what has picked up is going on a zip line ride, uh, rock climbing. Um, uh, simulated uh, skydiving uh, um, tubes where you're, you know, literally being blown by air and you're hovering five, 10 feet off the surface like you're skydiving. Uh, surfboarding simulators. Uh, now laser tag is uh, is being brought onto the ship. And uh, the Norwegian Bliss, brand new ship, uh, hitting the seas this week, uh, going through sea tiles. It's got a go-kart track on it. Thousand foot long go kart track, two stories high, with electric powered go karts. First at sea, uh, all kinds of gimmicks coming out on these uh, cruise ships. Absolutely unbelievable. So if you're if it's been ten years or you've never cruised, oh man, don't think that cruising is like the love boat where it's just you know it's all about dinner and getting tuxedos on and that type of thing. No, 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 no. It's all it's all different. Cruise ships today are being built for uh, maximum use and enjoyment and for um, how do I say this? The marketing department and the 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 folks who are Im imagining what cruise ships are going to you know be doing, they're thinking twelve years ahead. So if you're fifty, they're thinking about you as a sixty-two year old. If you're thirty, they're thinking about you as a forty-two year old. What will you want to be doing on a cruise ship in twelve years from now? We have to design the ship today to accommodate the needs twelve years from now. That means wireless everything. That means the most modern amenities, the most the smartest ship you could put on there with sensors everywhere, uh, because uh, twelve years from now that'll just be the norm. It'll probably be the norm in our homes or in our apartments, certainly at the office. It's not already, and that's what's happening in the cruise business. Anyway, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I'm located in Creston, British Columbia, in Canada. If you're wondering where I am, I'm three miles north of the uh, United States border. Idaho is just down here. And it's a gorgeous sunny day in America too. It's a gorgeous sunny day here. Day here, like I said, it's 52 or so. Beautiful weather. The birds are chirping outside. It's great. Uh, and uh, I have uh, viewers joining me right now. I'm going to say hi to them. Uh, also, to let you know, my channel is growing uh, quickly. It's only seven months old. If you're new to me, um, and if you're a subscriber, chances are that you're probably not more than a three month old subscriber. Most of my subscribers have joined me since early December. Uh, in early December, I hit 100 subscribers after starting last August. And uh, since early December, uh, I've now moved up to 1,341 subscribers as of yesterday, 1,439 now. I added eight more over the evening. I have 1,349 subscribers and I'm adding 10, 15, 20 a day, every day. They're just coming in. It's fantastic. I welcome all of you. 
newbie or old bee, thanks for joining this channel. And uh, those of you who are curious, I'm still not monetized. Uh, the monetization still hasn't come back to this channel and a bunch of others because of the YouTube uh, changes that are going on. And so my only form of income is from Super Chat, uh, which happens during live streams, which is here. So if any of you would like to make a donation to this poor old YouTuber, you can do so by hitting the dollar sign and sending me a couple of bucks. If you send me 10 bucks or more, uh, I got a deal. Uh, you're giving me a gift of 10 bucks. I'm giving you a gift, which are medallions, uh, which are behind me right over here, the size of a quarter. I also have these medallions over here. I found a Los Angeles Dodger medallion, by the way. Look at that. I have one. There it is. The first person to send me 10 bucks gets that LA Dodgers medallion. You can uh, use it as a ball marker on the golf course or put it on a business card holder, stick it on a wall, whatever you like. And then for you college fans, it's NCAA uh, March Madness. College, college uh, um, medallions, one of each uh, only. Uh, I have schools like uh, Alabama, Clem uh, Crimson Tide, the Virginia Tech, uh, Clemson Tigers, uh, Florida Gators for you Floridians, Texas A&M, South Carolina uh, Gamecocks, Iowa State Cyclones, the Virginia Cavaliers, Kentucky Wildcats, the Yale Blue Dogs, Nebraska Huskers, Wake Forest. Uh, I've got. Um, Minnesota Golden Gophers, Vanderbilt, uh, University of Mississippi. Um, uh, who have I got here? I've got Florida. I think this is Florida State. I believe so. Uh, Oklahoma Sooners, Syracuse Orange, Pittsburgh Panthers. That's just this sheet. I have one other sheet, one sheet here. A couple more medallions. Again, one only of all of these. If any of you want any of these schools, Kansas State Wildcats, uh, Seton Hall, Maryland uh, Terrapins. Indiana Hoosiers, I got the Hoosiers, LSU Tigers, Penn State, Mitney Lions, Michigan State Spartans, Missouri Tigers, uh, Arkansas Razorbacks, Wisconsin Badgers, Kansas Jayhawks, Georgetown Hoyas, uh, Tennessee Volunteers, I got the Volunteers right there, uh, Purdue, and uh, North Carolina Tar Heels, for you Tar Heel fans, can you see that one right there, it's hard to see this lighting, sorry folks. Uh, Auburn Tigers, uh, Illinois um, Fighting uh, <laughs> Illini, and the uh, Oklahoma State Cowboys. That's who I have in college. Just one of each. These were uh, samples sent to me when I had my store many years ago. And they uh, have a, a glue on the back of them, and you can stick them on any surface you want and uh, put them on your cell phone, on the back of your computer, whatever you like. So. Any of you guys want to do that, send me a $10 super chat and I will mail it to you at no extra charge. Okay, that's enough of the commercials, enough of the fundraising. Let's talk about who's here. Let's say hi to everybody. Uh, we've got them signing in like crazy. I've got Randy Lucas here saying howdy from Paradise, California, cloudy and a high of 41 today. Randy, I'm warmer than you are. I can't believe it. Uh, and you're down in California, IA. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, Desi is here. Desi Wagner. Hi, Bruce. 41 Fahrenheit in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Welcome from Kenosha. I love that. Love the sound of that town. Uh, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Mostly cloudy and 62 Fahrenheit here in Iba, South Carolina today. Welcome, Pamela. Welcome back again. Uh, Silo is here. Morning, Bruce. Hello from Seattle. That's just over there. Uh, it's about an eight-hour car ride for me. Um, <laughs> someone's here from Phoenix saying it's 73. Uh, I, the, the initial I, the initial I is here from Phoenix. And happy St. Patty's Day, uh, symbols everywhere on my screen here. Debbie Emanuel is here today. Hi, everyone. Not sure if you call this partly sunny or mostly cloudy. <laughs> but low 50s nonetheless in Northern California today. Uh, yeah, it's it, hopefully it's the end of winter. Hey, isn't it? Maybe? Huh? Um, welcome back, Debbie. Tommy Eaton is here. Hi, Bruce. It's a warm 79 degrees at Jacksonville Beach, Florida. That's right, Bruce. I took you to the beach to keep you warm, laughing out loud. Thank you so much uh, thinking about me. Uh, I'll get the sunscreen, make sure I don't get a burn. I'll make sure I have a hat on because, you know, a lot of surface area up here could get damaged. We don't want that. Um, Tommy Eaton saying, come on, guys, give Bruce thumbs ups. Uh, <laughs> he's got all kinds of thumbs ups on the screen. Uh, those of you who give me thumbs ups, I thank you so much. Uh, they help uh, with the YouTube search engines. I also have to thank a couple of you viewers. Uh, <laughs> you kind of got my drift the other day. Uh, if you send me a comment, I mean, you write me a comment uh, on any video I've ever made. 
you know, great video, love it, anything like that, I'll respond to it. Uh, that is called inter uh, interaction, v viewer and creator interaction. Those are good things in YouTube's world. That helps with the uh, promotion of the channel. And also, I noticed yesterday a few folks were giving me thumbs ups on videos that I posted a month ago, two months ago, four months ago. Uh, whether they watched them or not, they were giving me thumbs ups. <laughs> Thank you for all that. I'll take it. It's promotion. It's activity. It is um, enhanced promotion for the channel, and it, it has makes a difference. It's amazing. It's amazing how it does. So thank you for all of that, you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> who's here? Oh, uh, uh, looks like S. Swan is here. Uh, I think says Sil Sylvia. Sylvia, hi, Bruce and everyone. Greensboro, North Carolina, 59 degrees and sunny. Uh, welcome back. Wes Morrison is here checking in during lunch break. 80 here in New Braunfels, Texas. We'll catch rerun later today. Wes, thanks, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, oh, still <laughs> Silo saying, oops, forgot. High of 53, low of 43 in Seattle. <laughs> 10 degree range. And it's that time of year, isn't it? Uh, welcome, Silo. I saw some news the other day about your city, about the NHL Hockey League. Uh, it's talking about coming to your town, and you guys had a, a bit of a pre-season ticket promotional thing, and it was massive. Uh, within, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, uh, 25,000 season tickets were entered and ordered for, spoken for. You guys want hockey bad, and uh, that's exciting stuff. So a couple of years from now, we could have NHL hockey out of Seattle. Fantastic. Um, Cam Wilson is here. Hey, Bruce. Hey, everybody. Uh, Silo is saying uh, we will be on the bliss in October. I will give the go-kart track a try, uh, but I really don't care about the track or the laser tag. Seems like a waste of space. Uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, Silo, it's, it, this is one of those things. Uh, both of those features are kind of new to the cruise game. Uh, certainly the go-kart thing, that's completely different. I mean, the only other way you could have done anything like a go kart ride was to be on one of those, um, you know, uh, you know, what you call the machines, uh, video machines in the arcade, you know, which they've had for years. But this is a an actual real deal. Um, I kind of wonder about the cost of maintaining the uh, the entire track and those carts and uh, you know uh, repairing uh, you know damage to the tires and stuff. I don't know if the cruise line will 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 really feel it's worth their while. But, you know, if they can get away with maybe charging you 10 bucks a ride and they can, uh, you know, make it pay, they'll do it that way. I don't know. We'll have to see what uh, what it's about. I can tell you this much. That go-kart deal is going to become a media sensation because the Bliss, after sea trials, and it gets turned over to, uh, to uh, uh, Norwegian, the Norwegian folks are sailing it right to New York City. That's where they're headed, and they're gonna they're gonna have it there for a day or two. And I can tell you right now, all media has already been contacted. Camera crews all over the place will be on board that ship. Every travel writer and every travel agent within a three hundred mile radius, they're driving in, they're flying in, they're coming in to see that ship. I don't know if they're doing a one or two day little cruise in and out of New York or not. We're gonna see that ship everywhere on every form of media you name it it's going to be everywhere so yeah that'll be quite heavily exposed but from new york over to seattle to get ready for the alaska cruising season that is where it will start its uh, journeys from mighty joy is here mighty joy number one hello bruce 74 degrees in largo florida mighty joy i i suspect you're new i don't recall having seen your handle before if you are new welcome to my channel, uh, tell us, uh, the gang here will probably say hi to you in a few minutes. Tell me, uh, are you a, a regular cruiser? Have you cruised before or are you, uh, have you never been on a cruise ship before? Uh, if you have, tell us the favorite cruise you've ever been on or what your favorite ship is. And if you're a newbie, tell us if you've got a cruise booked and what's the name of the ship, where are you going? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you for sure. Kathy Butler's here. The bliss sounds wonderful, Silo. Let us know how it goes. Welcome, Kathy. Keith Mah Mahoney is here. How would you know if your cabin was not below the nightclub or kitchen? Uh, Keith, uh, easy way to figure this one out is uh, check floor plans of the ship you're going to book on. And it's easy to do that because you can see the floor plans right on the website for the cruise line itself. Or uh, head over to one of my favorite uh, websites called vacationstogo.com where you can uh, check the pricing of cruises. Uh, they've got floor plans for every ship. And uh, what you figure out is uh, 
you know, where on the ship your room is, uh, find your cabin number and that type of thing. Uh, or if you don't have a cabin number and you just want to figure out not to be under the, you know, the sports deck or the children's play zone <laughs> or the disco, uh, find out where the disco is first <laughs> and then work backwards and go, okay, I know the disco is over here on this side of the ship. It's towards the middle or the back or the front quarter or wherever. It is. Now look down below the, the decks below that and find out where cabins are below that disco. And then, you know, you know where to not be booking your room. That's one way to do it. Uh, the other way, of course, is when you get ready to book your cabin. If you're talking to someone at, say, vacationstogo.com, if you're using them to book, you'll, you'll be dialing 800 number anyway. You'll be talking to a human being. That person will go through the deck plans with you. Uh, and you can say to them, can you tell me what's above that cabin? And uh, below that, you know, am I, am I in a danger zone uh, with regard to noise and racket and uh, the jogging track or, or whatever it is? Uh, they'll help you. Okay. Uh, good question. Very good question. You need to know that info. Sylvan Forrest is saying to me, he's hi today. He's saying to me, hi, Bruce. He is here. Hi, Bruce and everyone. We are enjoying 80 beautiful degrees in Delray Beach, Florida, 100% sunny, no wind, and very enjoyable. It's too early for rum and coke, but uh, dad's smoking a cigar. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, that sure beats those uh, 60s and 70s you had all this week, even some of those 50s in the evening. So, Sylvan, yes, welcome back to uh, a nice uh, a nice uh, bit of uh, weather there. Fantastic. Um, Silo is saying, okay, I will in a, in a haven. Uh, okay, I will in a haven courtyard penthouse, 18th floor. Hope to have a video review of the room and ship too. Oh, man, Silo, you're going to be in a nice room there. You're going to have a fantastic deal. Uh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> Silo, you're going to be on, the, uh, on a courtyard a penthouse uh, in the, uh, on the Bliss. Fantastic. Yeah, am I looking forward to hearing from you? That's awesome stuff. Uh, Norman Duarte is 28 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. That, that is cool. That, that's miserable. you got to stay inside. Uh, just get the, uh, you know, either make up some of uh, that mull wine, you know, you take some some red wine and you put it on the stove and warm it up, you know, and put a little cinnamon stick in there, you know, maybe that's a, a warm me up. Or you get the coffee going, you know, and um, or make a nice espresso, but a little coffee or a latte uh, and then get some of that, uh, you know, uh, Bailey's and sort of, you know, fortify the coffee. Uh, there's ways to fight this. Uh, you know, scourge that's hitting Connecticut today, Norman. I know you'll figure it out. You'll 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 come up with a solution to this terrible problem of 28 degree weather. Welcome to the channel. Don't go outside. Stay inside. And watch the show. Elizabeth Breen, 80 degrees and sunny in Daytona Beach. It is fantastic, Norman. I'm sorry, but Elizabeth is right behind you on the message. I just had to read it. She's next in line, and she's at 80. You're 28. I'm at 52. It's not fair, but uh, you are in Connecticut, though. I mean, you know, it's not that bad. Could be better weather-wise. It'll come. It'll come. Cam Wilson, I can already see it. First ever go-kart course at sea. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, Tommy Eaton, what cruise line runs the bliss? Uh, Tommy, it's Norwegian. NCL, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Uh, just uh, if you want to see what the ship's all about, go to a uh, YouTube channel, enter Norwegian Bliss. It's a bunch of videos up there already from the – so-called computer uh, animations that were released by Norwegian. Uh, there have also been videos released by the shipbuilding yard as each section of the ship was assembled and then it was pulled out. You can get a peek at it, but you're going to be inundated with uh, information on this ship starting uh, the next couple of weeks. Uh, it just, it's just it's going to be non, it's going to be relentless. It's going to be something. Um, who else is talking to me here? Debbie Manuel, Tommy, Norwegian. She said, Tommy Eaton, I looked up my uh, stateroom on Vacations to Go. I hope they play cool music on the piano bar. The bar is right above my stateroom. <laughs> well, you know, Tommy, one way to, uh, to uh, combat that is just go to the darn thing. <laughs> Hang out there. Be the last one to leave the room. You know, you and the piano player at uh, 3 in the morning. You know, you're hanging on by a thread, you know, on the edge of the piano and slipping a one dollar tip in the guy's tip jar so you'll keep playing. That way it won't bother you in your room. You'll just be, you know, laid out, you know, after 15 drinks on his piano, or maybe escorted up by security, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you'll have to you'll have to you'll have to watch that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh 
Silo saying, actually, the Norwegian Cruise Line Joy has a track. It was to be the Bliss, but they decided to send it to China and call it Joy. Great looking ship. Interesting. Nina Frank, good evening from a snowing Sweden. Oh, my gosh. It is winter in Sweden, though. I mean, to be fair to Sweden. Uh, it, well, welcome, Nina. It's nice to have you. Sylvan saying, tis a great day for an Irish coffee. There you go, Sylvan. Great advice for our friends in Connecticut and anywhere else it's cold or not. I mean, does it have to be 28 degrees to enjoy uh, a libation like that? I, I don't think so. There's no, no rule saying you can't have one anytime. Norman Duarte, uh, hot coffee is good. Thank you. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, uh, TE, you're welcome. Uh, Norman, is, I can't wait for April 8th to 15th because he's on the Norwegian breakaway for a cruise. Fantastic, Norman. It's coming. It's coming soon. Uh, we'll be looking forward to a report from you on that one. Michelle Lucas, uh, corned beef on Irish soda, bread in the oven, green beer in the steins, shaking our shamrocks to back to back to back. It's going to be great. Triple cruise coming up. Awesome stuff. Uh, <laughs> Silo is asking Norman, where to Norman? Kathy Butler sounds nice. Norman, hope it's a great cruise. Uh, yeah, Norman, where are you cruising on your, on your uh, uh, cruise coming up? Where are you going? Uh, Rob P saying, Keith Mulhoney, check the deck plan of the ship above and below your room. Yeah, that's important. Uh, Sylvia has just sent me a donation. Sylvia, thank you very much. She has just sent me a $10 super chat. Sylvia, you just tell me what, uh, what medallion you want. It's yours. Uh, I will make sure to get it to you. That is fantastic. I really appreciate it. Uh, at the end of this video, when I post it on the internet, on, on YouTube, I'll have in the description below all the uh, listing of all the medallions that I have as far as all the sports teams go. Uh, and uh, eventually I'll add, I, I really wasn't going to add the colleges because I only have one of each. So as soon as one's gone, it's gone. Uh, but any of you who want a college, ask me, Bruce, do you have so-and-so? If I have it, you got it. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, Sylvia, you'll see my email address uh, in the um, description below this video after I post it. And uh, just send me your uh, request, what medallion you'd like, and send me your address, and I'll fire it off to you. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Um, those of you who, who don't uh, use Super Chat or don't wish to or whatever, you can also send me a donation through PayPal. On my homepage, there's a little logo. I think it's up here on this top corner, little PayPal logo. You hit that. You can send me any amount you want through, uh, through PayPal globally, and it seems to work rather well, too. And I thank all of you for that. Uh, Debbie's going, yay, S1. Norman Duarte, NASA, he's saying. Um, Kathy Butler, thanks, S1. Randy Lucas, good going, S1. These are all folks who've been super chatting me already, and they're just welcoming you to the club. Fantastic. Mary W., hi, everyone. 23 degrees here in New Hampshire. Feels like 13 degrees in the wind chill. Well, um, Mary, you got to take Sylvan's advice. Uh, maybe an Irish cream might be, an Irish coffee might be the way to go. <laughs> you got to find a way to fight this, and that might be the way to do it. Norman Duarte, we were on the ship last year too. Fun, fun, ah, fantastic. That's great. You, you know, if it's a winner, stick with a winner. Why would you change? Right? If you like the ship, do it again. Absolutely, Norman. Fantastic. Way to go. A um, couple of things I was going to bring up today before we get into trivia here, because uh, I got a couple of trivia questions for you guys. Uh, I noticed uh, I noticed a couple of deals this morning on vacationstogo.com, which I've already mentioned. I'm not paid, by the way, by, by vacationstogo.com. And another clarification to the you newbies, although most of you here are, are, are veterans, but there probably are a number of folks watching who don't sign in, which is cool. Just so you know, I am not a paid spokesman for the cruise business. I'm not employed by anyone in the cruise trade. I'm not a travel agent. I have no ulterior motive to try to, uh, you know, get to know you and have fun, and then try to sell you a cruise in a couple of months. I, I'm not that guy. Uh, I will be organizing a meet and greet cruise, yes. Uh, when the time comes, uh, probably late this year, uh, October, November, I'll look for putting a cruise together, and I'll let you guys know what cruise I have in mind, and uh, you know, I'll contact the cruise line with an expression of interest, and if I can get us a better deal than what's posted elsewhere, fantastic. Uh, but I'm not, uh, in the meantime, I am not a paid spokesperson for any outfit, including vacations to go.com, which is kind of a tragedy, but uh, I've not even approached those people, by the way, too small yet. 
Um, my channel at 1,349 subscribers is too small <laughs> for me to pick up the phone and call any cruise outfit to say, hey, how would you like to pay me to talk about you? It's not what I'm about. I love this independence that I have. I can talk to you about any cruise line, any ship, any entity, and not have to worry about uh, making somebody angry uh, over at the PR department or in the legal department or whatever, because I'm not employed by anyone. So if you ask me anything about a cruise, I'll give you my opinion, uh, my thoughts, my research. And if I can't answer the question, you've noticed uh, there are people here who probably have the answer. Uh, there are a bunch of folks here who are avid cruisers and they love to talk about cruising. So any question you have about going on a cruise, you let me know. In the meantime, uh, I, I found a couple of deals today on vacationstogo.com, uh, which I enjoy using, have for years, and uh, with some deals, and I thought I'd mention them to you today. Now, this week, uh, this one ship has come up again and again and again on my channel, on my live streams. It seems like every couple of days, uh, we hear another story or we hear another tale of woe uh, regarding this one particular cruise ship, and it's called... The MSC Seaside, brand new cruise ship, barely two and a half, three months old if I have got my dates right, although time flies when you're having fun on this show, I'll tell you that. Uh, the MSC Seaside is a, uh, a big ship. It, it can accommodate, I think, up to 5,000 passengers. Um, it is the first of its kind. It is a, a brand new design, brand new look. Uh, there's no other cruise ship that really looks like this cruise ship. Really, it's it is really distinctive, stunning. I thought it looked. I, I like the look of the ship. It's a fabulous look. But we've got problems, um, or it's got problems. Uh, the ship is an all new engineering design as well, because the floor plans are completely different than any other ship out there. The, the, the ship line that built this ship had never built one exactly like it before. It was the first of. Now, the story goes, I think there are going to be four or five of these versions built for MSC. That was the master plan. But number one, the Seaside, uh, launched with great fanfare and was touted to be the first cruise ship specifically targeted to North American cruisers by MSC to be stationed out of Miami. Um, MSC has had a ship called the Davina. Uh, out of Miami or out of Florida now for a couple of years in the Caribbean, very successful, uh, very nice ship, excellent reviews, food, everything wonderful. People love the ship, love the cruise. Uh, they love the line um, on the Davina. Um, but I would say 80, 85% of all the cruisers on the Davina are actually flying in from Europe. Uh, Miami has a beautiful airport and uh, Travelers come to Miami, spend a few days in South Miami, enjoy the area, come to the cruise ship, take a week-long cruise, maybe spend a couple more days in Miami, and then head back to Europe or wherever they're from. MSC is big in Europe. They're the number one cruise company for Mediterranean cruises out of, uh, out of the Mediterranean. And so a lot of Europeans have been on MSC cruises in the Mediterranean, and they would love the idea of taking an MSC cruise in the Caribbean. Makes sense. It's kind of like a piece of home, sort of like an American flying to Rome and getting on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship that they were on in uh, the Caribbean a couple of years earlier. Makes sense. Well, the seaside has had issue after issue after issue right off the get-go from the very first uh, inaugural cruise. It was already having problems during the inaugural cruises, and it came to my attention through some YouTubers who were posting videos who were on an inaugural cruise actually in uh, Europe before the ship came over. And then the ship came over the Atlantic to Miami and there were problems during that trip too. And the problems were uh, like uh, pipes bursting uh, everywhere, public bathrooms having water issues, um, uh, private cabins, and these are the worst of it, lower, lower level private cabins where the, uh, the uh, plumbing was backing up the toilets. And the uh, poop smell was unbelievable. Not not just one cabin, but a series of them. And floors of the ship were reeking of this stuff. And they couldn't find the cost. They couldn't. They couldn't stop it. They they were they were trying everything they could. The crew was everywhere, scrambling everywhere to try to fix the problem. They thought they'd have it fixed, and then it would start again. And the uh, sewage backup was coming through the shower doors, like bottom of the shower, the drains. 
and the drainage uh, would fill the, the the shower floor would fill up and it would overflow onto the floor of the bathroom. Oh, and so these these poor people who were stuck in these cabins, they couldn't be moved to another cabin. Ship is full. They would go to customer service and complain. The customer service people would just kind of go, ah, so you know, sorry, uh, nothing. They wouldn't do anything. No compensation, no nothing. And then the other complaints started happening when they were doing the weekly cruises out of Miami through the Caribbean, one after the other after the other, about poor food quality, buffet just got awful. Uh, the entertainment is all opera, opera, opera all the time. It's just driving North Americans crazy. They want Chuck Berry. They want Elvis. They want rock and roll. They want anything but just opera, please. How about a Broadway show? Something North American, maybe. Um announcements in six languages uh and announcements to you know come to the jewelry show come to the art auction come and play bingo come into annoying as can be because they have those uh, sirens go off first then the six languages of the same announcement would take five minutes per announcement driving people loco uh elevators are down uh spa units uh with with uh, you know out of order signs on them for the entire week not an hour not a day the whole cruise you couldn't use the the spa here or you couldn't use the hot tub there the elevators weren't working here elevators were blocked off for certain passengers on upper levels which meant that there were four elevators but only two for you and the doors would open and there'd be people in there with wheelchairs and walkers and phil you couldn't get it i mean complaints 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 up and down the line service complaints restaurant waiter waiter and waitress complaints and the front desk useless uh terrible terrible stuff anyway enough of that it's a rant but i'm sorry i'm repeating what's coming at me uh i found a deal on the embassy seaside <laughs> i wouldn't take it but there's a deal on the embassy seaside uh you can get a balcony for 429 bucks for a one-week cruise in the caribbean uh april 28th <laughs> or you can take one on may the 12th for $449, balcony. Um, the only good news about a balcony, one of them, is that you can open the darn balcony door and let the air in if the poop smell comes in. But you can't have that door open 24 seven. The air conditioning system will just go bonkers and uh, it'll just, uh, it'll shut everything off, uh, crisis. Um, I tell you, it's it's almost uh, it's almost too good to, uh, to believe and it is, it's, I wouldn't take the cruise. I'd pay a hundred bucks more and take another cruise line instead. I'd pay 150 more and take another cruise because I'm not going to be the guinea pig uh, hoping that everything's okay now. If you're on the very top of the uh, yacht club on the MSCC side, fine. Everything's fine up there. Everything's working. <clears throat> no poop smell up there. Uh, the staff up there taking care of the high rollers because they tip better. Uh, but if you're one of the 4,500 passengers on the rest of the ship, you're gambling. Now, a lot of these folks are coming off the ship saying, everything's fine. I had a great cruise. I had no problem whatsoever. I loved it. Everything was wonderful. I loved the entertainment. I loved the food. I was happy. I was happy. Uh, but many, many, many passengers were really upset and uh, really felt that whatever they paid, they paid too much. And they're demanding compensation. They're getting nothing. Uh, the cruise line is, is not really communicating with disgruntled passengers. They're advertising like crazy right now on radio, on television. Uh, in uh, on the internet, all up and down the uh, uh, in Florida, uh, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, to attempt to get locals, you know, people within three, four, five hundred miles, <coughs> to decide to take a cruise <coughs> with a month to go, uh, three weeks to go, four weeks to go, because they've had so many cancellations from disgruntled passengers. It's just been unbelievable. Anyway, that's one of the deals that I found today, and I thought I'd mention that. Um, just coming through uh, my messages again to make sure if I'm not uh, missing anybody. Uh, here we go. Um, sorry, folks, for being a little late here. <clears throat> um, uh, Kathy Butler is saying to uh, Norman, uh, that, that ship you're going on, it must be great if you're going twice. And he's he's right. A silo, hold on. You can't get me a discount or an upgrade. I'm out of here laughing out loud. Sylvan Forest, meet and greet cruise. Count me in. Would we stop in Costa Rica, please? I want to buy a winter house there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Debbie Manuel Silo, she's crying. Uh, Cam Wilson, I thought you were about to say Anthem of the Seas, laughing out loud. Uh, Kathy Butler, I appreciate your straight. I appreciate your straightforward approach. There are, uh, there is a YouTuber that I used to follow that uh, that once they got so big, stopped being honest, so not to upset cruise lines, only said uh, said differently on a private channel. 
Uh, this is the this is the trouble with YouTubers uh, that become sponsored. Uh, once you're part of a family, you know now you got to kind of watch yourself. Uh, yeah, interesting. You know, do you take the money or do you do you, you know how do you do it? Right. Um, Sylvia saying, "Don't need a medallion. Not a sports person. I really enjoy your channel. Uh, or oh, not? Uh, oh, not the MSCC side again." She says. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I, uh, Sylvia, I, I've got in my memory. I know uh, any contributions that have come in because I have records of them. I've got some other medallions coming uh, that I'm digging up from my storage. Uh, just, just hold tight. I'll, uh, I'll show you the the other ones, and then maybe one of those will attract you or someone you know. So just, we'll, we'll figure something out. Randy Lucas, uh, hi Debbie E, up from the hill. Uh, Silo saying MSC Stinky, not the seaside. Uh, Debbie saying hi, Randy. Hope all is well. Tommy Eaton, MSC has more commercials on TV that uh, uh, that Carter's got liver pills. Laugh out loud. <laughs> they are advertising big time. Oh my goodness, they got to fill those ships. Kathy, they should spend the PR money on better staffing. Tommy Eaton pitching seven day cruise for three uh, four thirty nine. Yeah, there you are. I, like I say, it's unbelievable. Uh, silo. Well, they fixed the stink, but I hear the food is still bad. Uh, yeah, and I had someone talk to me three days ago. They were on the ship two weeks ago. The smell still there, still there, even two weeks ago. Kathy Butler. Yeah, you could avoid smell with high cabin, but the service and food failures are unavoidable. Same with the elevators and with the uh, mechanics on the spas. Silo MSC should have build uh, uh, build it as the recreation of the famous poop cruise. <laughs> The recreation, of the recreation of famous poop cruise. <laughs> the recreation of the famous poop cruise. That was Carnival Triumph about six years ago. Yeah, five six years ago. What a week that was. Wendy Thompson. Hi everybody. Hi Bruce. I finally found how to comment. Uh, how to comment? Sea uh, Cruisers has a video about Seaside. Not very happy with the smell. That's right. Uh, she is also, I believe, a travel agent uh, and does meet and greet cruises with her clients. Uh, and she was on that ship for a cruise and did a bunch of videos about it. But she did a private video on her own um, where I think the, the way she worked with it, she did a cruise, shot a bunch of video, um, uh, had a bunch of videos that she had already made that she was airing while she was on the ship, got home, made a video in her backyard, told us about the smell on the darn thing, just terrible. And then she has been releasing videos ever since uh, from the crew she had with her clients and uh, and all the various day trips that she's had. But, uh, yeah, there was one video she talked about. It was awful just when all the other videos were coming out on it, too. Just terrible. Uh, Sylvan Forest, I would pay good money not to sail on the seaside. People are doing that. Uh, Sylvia saying, watch Jim Zimmerman. Jim Zim comments about MSC Seaside. Uh, he will tell it like it is. And he did. Um, Jim uh, has a great channel been around a long time um he talked about i think he said something like he had been on 43 cruises with his wife and this one was number 43 for his favorite the worst it was the worst cruise he's ever been on i loved a lot of things he loved about the ship and i get it i i can see why but then he cited the faults and uh, not good yeah People are canceling left, right, and center. Cam Wilson, very true. Uh, Sylvia, okay, thanks. Sylvia, or S. Swan is saying, okay, thanks. Uh, Cam Wilson, does MSC have a hierarchy uh, where the yacht club passengers have a lot more privileges than the regular passengers? I want to hear a bit about more about that. Cam, they do. It's kind of like the Haven Club on Norwegian, um, similar to uh, the other cruise lines will, where they'll have their higher-end penthouse units with their own concierge or their own uh, maybe a bar or their own private pool area, uh, uh, you know, uh, where they have uh, loungers up there for just guests of this club. That's what they're doing with the yacht club on MSC. And it's, it's, cru it's um, um, cruise line wide. All the cruises in MSC have the yacht club, all the ships. Um, and so you pay a lot extra to get up there. Uh, but then you get extra perks. And I believe uh, in some of the uh, cabins, <clears throat> some, of, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> some of the larger um, balcony cabins, uh, I think Jim Zimmerman was in one of them, where you have a jacuzzi on your, on your balcony. Uh, the room is a bit larger. You also get extra perks. And one of them is like um, 
you can get a free massage. Like you get a massage included in your cruise fare. You get um, you get um, uh, a free drink. Uh, you know, get drinks at certain bars, or you get uh, spa pass automatically uh, included. A bunch of other little perks like that. The the yacht club does have that as well, but you're paying for it. It's not given to you for free. You're paying it. It's upfront. Uh, and uh, they're offering that. Uh, Kathy Butler saying they look kind of disruptive in the hallways. Sea cruisers are saying wouldn't want a cabin next to them. Yeah, I, uh, I don't want to criticize anybody else. Uh, you know, everyone does their thing the way they do their thing. And uh, she has a lot of subscribers, a lot of views, been around a long time. And, uh, uh, you know, um, what works for you works for you. Uh, I'm a little more of a laid back kind of cruiser. I'm not a, uh, you know, not running up and down the hallways or anything like that. I'm not a, uh, you're not going to find me on the, on the climbing wall. <laughs> you're not, you might find me watching somebody, but I'm not going up there. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, so I'm of course 62 and I'm a little, a uh, little, little, little demographic differential between me and, you know, that gang, but uh, successful channel. Been around a long time. Uh, Kathy saying, Embassy has most of the front of the ship blocked off for the yacht club. Exclusive service, elevator, restaurant, pool, sun decks, et cetera. Many complaints about the segregation. And this is a danger that cruise ships and cruise lines may start running into if they keep this up. Because um, uh, there was a time where there were large cabins. And there were smaller, regular cabins, and everybody was everywhere. Uh, the high roller in the owner's suite ate at the buffet if they chose to, or would go to the high-end restaurant, and I could go to the high-end restaurant and pay my share. Or they would be in a dining room, and I'd be in a dining room. There'd be no difference. Uh, as a matter of fact, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't be able to tell or looking around the room, well, who's got the big unit and who doesn't, because we're all wearing you know, flowery shirts and shorts and having a great old time. Um, but more and more and more, the cruise lines are going the way of the airlines where they've got the first class, the business class, the premium economy, the economy, and they're just separating everybody out and they're charging more and getting more, charging more and getting more. And now they're trying to get the cheap room players to pay more too. And the first salvo started with, car uh, with the carnival. Fun to the fast, fun to the pass, or fast, you know, that that fast pass. Now, Princess is starting to offer early boarding privileges and early booking privileges to inside room passengers or anyone else that's willing to cough up the money. And Carnival has found it so successful, they just bumped the price of the fast to the fun deal by 20 bucks for the week. And it's a way to nickel and dime everyone on the ship for more for the same service that used to be offered as part of the cruise, but with these separate high-end uh, suites, like the Haven on Norwegian and the Yacht Club, you're finding that more and more of the ship is being built for just those folks, and the rest of us can't go there. We can't even go there and look at it. Can't even get in there, because they now have key sensors that you have to pass through to get up there, and your key won't work to get there anymore. And to me, it's bugging me. It, it's it's getting to me. I, I'm not a fan of it. I'm actually more opposed to it than in agreement with it. I understand what they're doing. I get it as a CEO and as a bean counter for the cruise line. Great way to get more money from people who want to be a little more exclusive. Rather than send them from the Norwegian line over to the region seven seas, they're saying, well, you don't have to go to the Region 7 Seas cruise ship where it's more and you get more. No, nah, we'll just add this little add-on on top of the ship at the front just for you guys. But think about the 5,000 passengers downstairs who are now going, oh, we got a bunch of hoity-toities up there, and the rest of us are being treated like cattle. It, it's getting, it's going to get to this. And uh, the more they keep differentiating, there may be issues. I don't know. I'm just... Um, you know, to me, I'm just not a fan of it. But 10 years from now uh, and multi millions of dollars later of profits, the cruise lines are going to say, I don't care what you think. We're making a ton of money as long as those folks are willing to pay to get up there and we can still sell those cabins down below. We don't care because the business is booming and we figured out how to cash in on it.
Okay, I get it. I get you. But cruise lines like a Viking, where it's one class. Uh, in effect, it's all balcony suites. It's all inclusive. There is a little bit of a difference between the one version of balcony and the upper balcony. It might be, you know, 50 bucks a day more. You get a few extra perks, but you all get to go to the specialty restaurants. No extra charge. You all get uh, wine and drinks at lunch and dinner. No extra charge. All inclusive. You can bring alcohol on board without any hassle. To me, that sounds a little more attractive. And I might want to pay the price to go on Viking rather than going into the Haven Club or the Yacht Club because uh, no one is going to look at me. Uh, if I if they identify me as a Yacht Clubber and I get that look of, oh, the privileged one, I'm on a Viking cruise line. We're all privileged. <laughs> we're, all, uh, we're all first class passengers. We're all the same. And we all get the amenities and it's wonderful. And yes, if I want to pay extra for a massage, that's my choice. Everybody has that choice. It's all good. If I want to pay extra for a high-end 12-year-old scotch to drink in the bar, that's my choice too. It's okay. I haven't got a problem with that. But uh, these new uh, things that are happening now with inside rooms, outside rooms, one class of balcony, another class of balcony, another class of balcony, then the haven, then the owner suite, and all kinds of privileges in between and denials of services in between. It's kind of like watching the Titanic movie. Uh, those in third class and second class, it wasn't a, wasn't a pleasant trip before it went down either. Uh, you know, right up until the iceberg, it still wasn't a good trip. <laughs> we'll have to see how this goes. <laughs> Kathy um, is talking there. Oh, sorry. I'm just rereading my messages. I'm going to have to check you out. Uh, Norman saying, we'll find you in the spot. Yes, you will. Kathy Butler, I'm assuming the Norwegian is better than uh, having the Haven. Is is better about having the haven, but will not. Is, is seems to be segregated too. Uh, I I noticed it. Yeah, any Norwegian cruise lines vets noticed it. I noticed it. Uh, yeah, the, if you were up there, you could, if you weren't there, you couldn't get there. And if you were up there, uh, enjoy it. I mean, look, if you are a member of the Haven Club and you paid the money and you're staying up there and you're enjoying it, I say great. You're not going to come down stairs and point your finger at me, going, oh, "I'm in the Haven and you're not." No, people don't do that. But if, if cruisers begin to feel that, well, I paid for a balcony room and I looked at the brochure from the cruise line and whichever cruise line it is, I don't care which one it is, beautiful pictures, happy, smiling faces, uh, gorgeous scenes of the turquoise waters and everything's great. But then when I got on the ship, I found out, oh my God, uh, I go to dinner at the buffet, 20 minute lineup to get in. I go to the specialty restaurant, uh, the, the Chinese restaurant, uh, or Asian or or, or 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 Italian, 15 minute wait to get in because there's 6,000 passengers on this ship and it's a bloody zoo down here. The casino is all smoky and packed. Uh, everything is, is, is not like the brochure. And yet there's this club up here that 500 people get to go to. They're the ones enjoying the brochure pictures that I was sold on. I'm paying a thousand bucks a week a person with tips, fees, taxes, upcharges, upsells, you know, we're paying 2,500, whatever dollars for this thing and more. Uh, and yet I'm not getting the brochure deal. I'm getting a, uh, you know, uh, a, a cramped, packed, noisy experience that I done. I, that's not what I came here for. I'm not coming back because you once you fool me once, but you're not going to fool me twice. Got to watch that. They have to watch for that. Um, would you pay for early boarding? Kathy's saying, would you pay for early boarding? What are the advantage other than getting on first? I would not pay for early boarding. I would not pay to be able to spend more money faster than you on ship. I won't go on that ship. Like I just, if I get like the Epic, the Norwegian Epic, you're not getting me back on that ship. I enjoyed a lot of that ship, but I disenjoyed a lot of that ship enough to not go back on that ship a second time. You're not fooling me the second time. And so uh, I think this is this may happen to others. Uh, Mighty Joy number one on the breakaway class uh, uh, classes. NCL has the Haven in the aft section, which isn't available to the rest of the ship. Not obnoxious and doesn't impede the enjoyment of the masses. I, I agree, Mighty Joy. That's that's a point I also want to make. That you know some of these are are off to the you know they're up there and it's a world unto themselves. 
more power to you. Mighty Joy, will the cure will be curious if it will be more noticeable on the Bliss, where the Haven is going to be in the forward section. Yes, that will be interesting, uh, Mighty. Silo is saying the Haven, priority boarding, disembarkation, priority ports, tenders, butler service, show seats, meals in a special area, concierge service, private pool, hot tub, and several other perks. And you are paying for it. No question about it, Silo. You're paying for it. But I'll tell you, for the kind of money you're dropping to go into the Haven, uh, you can go on biking. Uh, you can go on reaching seven seas. You could probably get a seaborne cruise. Uh, you might be able to get on a crystal cruise and really be really get the good stuff for the same money. And you're not on a ship of 5,000. And you're not, um, when it's time to go on a shore excursion, um, you see, you know, getting off the ship and then coming back on and you're on shore now and you're surrounded by 5,000 others from your ship. Um, you're on a, you're in much smaller ports. You're in much more tranquil settings, generally speaking, uh, for that kind of money. I just mentioned that. Uh, Debbie Emanuel, Kathy, on Norwegian Cruise Line, the only time I noticed anything about the Haven was when going to a show and they had a section in front and off to the side chained off for Haven guests. Other than that, we didn't notice. Um, but what I'm wondering, Debbie Emanuel and others, is they're showing, they're now selling these passes to everybody. This, you know, 90 bucks gets you early embarkation, gets you early de embarkation gets you priority for shore excursions what will it now get you priority seating in the shows will it give you priority in the comedy club will it give you priority in the piano bar in other words in the rest of the ship where the rest of us are i start seeing that and i start getting peeled because uh i'm thinking guys i'm dropping two and a half thousand bucks for a week with all the charges for my wife and i and for a hundred bucks more, you guys are playing these games with these folks for this priority stuff. Chintzing for a hundred bucks more. Why don't you just charge us all a hundred bucks more and be done with it? Uh, and I'll shop around. But again, this is an old guy speaking. <laughs> okay. Uh, as uh, Swan is saying to Kathy Butler, I wouldn't pay extra to get on first. I'm eventually going to get on the ship and still have fun. They can't leave without me on embarkation day. Uh, they really can't. They want that ship full on embarkation day. And if there's 500 of us that refuse to pay and we're the last 500 to get on, everyone else will have to wait until we get on. Uh, and then if it takes us 10 minutes longer to get to the muster drill because you didn't get us on earlier, you're not holding the muster drill on time, are you? You're not leaving the port. You're not getting out of the harbor on time. Like there's this us versus them thing that might build up. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm asking. I'm wondering. I'm really wondering if this is going to happen. John Landry, I have sailed on the uh, Yacht Club on Davina, and, and some of this information is wrong and exaggerated. Okay, John, uh, by all means, tell me your thoughts, because that's why we're here. If we're wrong, we're wrong. We would love to be corrected. Steaming Bean, hey, Bruce, 120 days till my escape Bermuda cruise. Fantastic, Steaming Bean. Silo on the Bliss Haven, Seven Nights Mexican Riviera Courtyard Penthouse was $36.99 a person. We got $150 per person uh, from our travel agent and a slight discount on the food and drink package. Yeah, 3,700 bucks. I can tell you, Silo, for $3,700, boy, can you get a nice cruise on Seaborn. Could you get a lovely cruise on Viking? I mean, I don't know if you'd even have to pay that much. Um, that is serious money. Mighty Joy, number one, I'm sure on the Bliss, it will be more of an issue since there will be a whole level of observation lounge reserved for haven yeah the rest of the ship has one but it'll be crowded and that's the point uh one of the points i wanted to make uh again john landry i think that's kind of where we're headed here on some of these things that these new ships are trending towards um uh, it's changing that's i guess maybe what i'm saying uh steaming bean faster to the fun is a money grab he says kathy butler thanks mighty joy great info the steaming bean on my first cruise was on epic did not have uh, the at sea feeling. What issues do you have about the epic? Uh, issues where uh, you want to get from one end to the other end of the ship because you want to go to the buffet or something. You had to go through the casino on one of the levels. Smoking is allowed in the casino. Uh, you're trying to walk through there. It's crowded because people are, especially on sea days, the casino is crowded on sea days. And it's right in the middle of a major 
thoroughfare. You got to walk through it. It's it's really inconvenient, pain in the butt. Um, and if you're a player, you want to play in the casino, you got people bumping into you all the time as they're walking by, bumping into your chair. You're just sitting in front of a slot machine. Didn't like that. Uh, comedy club. You had to reserve a seat in the comedy club, line up an hour before the show started to be able to get a seat near the front because it's festival seating. You didn't reserve a seat. You're entitled to a seat. And uh, you get in there, and it's a mad scramble because the chairs are just on the floor in rows but not organized. And people now, four or five people get together, and they move their chairs to hang out with each other. And you want to get a drink from the waiter. There's two or three of them in the room. There's 300 people going to be jam-packed in there. You're waiting a half an hour for a drink. It's ridiculous. And the floor is flat. The stage is a foot high. Uh, so if you're fifth, tenth, tenth row back, fifth row back, you can't see the performer because th there's someone 6'4 in front of you. It's between you and the stage. It's It was ridiculous. All kinds of stuff like that. Lineups, and uh, it, it was just not well designed. Just my my take. My take. Kathy Butler, I love to go concierge if I can, but can't always afford it. Silo saying the haven on the Norwegian Jade was nice, but the service and amenities were not what we thought it would be. That is why we wanted to try the Bliss. Right on, Silo. Right on. Uh, Kathy Butler, thanks. Uh, Swan, Cam, I love those uh, talks. Just love these talks. It's what we're doing. Um, Kathy Butler on Disney first. Uh, on Disney first. On gets to gets to get in line. Okay, <laughs> on Disney first. On gets to get in line for special reservations, so it matters, but seems not too much on others. Not so much. Uh, I'm having trouble with that one, Kathy. I can't, can't quite get your logic on that. Sorry. Silo, hundred dollars more. I wish. There you go. Uh, yeah. It isn't a hundred more, is it? Yeah. Samantha Farmer, why you pay twenty five hundred dollars? Check out vacations to go and find a better deal. Laughing out loud. I, I I hear you. Elizabeth Breen, I always pay extra to get on first. It's worth it for our family. We can get on. We get our room. We get our our suits on. Have some lunch. Have some fun for a few extra hours. Uh, you are paying for that day anyway. Elizabeth, I, I I'm not arguing with that. Um, I get you. I just, I just kind of find it um, uh, annoying. Let's say if if you arrive at eleven a.m. and they allow boarding at eleven fifteen, and you're there at eleven, get you on. Uh, you get there at uh, one thirty in the afternoon, and I've been there since noon, and I'm sitting in the waiting area to get on, and you show up at one thirty, and you can go right on in front of me. I'm ticked. I'm ticked. Because I've been here an hour and a half sitting on this vinyl seat, whether with my kids or not. I, I just get this impression that when you arrive at the terminal, you arrive at the terminal. It's a big cruise ship. Uh, open up two gangplanks and load them in the front and the back and let's go. I mean, you're putting 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 people on these new cruise ships. I don't want to see these games going on uh, where for 100 more, nickel and dime me to get on the ship. An hour earlier, I, I, now you're making me mad. You just you're bugging me now. That's just that's just a personal opinion, though. Uh, you don't have to agree with it, but don't leave the channel because of it. <laughs> oh, what can I say? The steaming bean, twenty five hundred are typical prices at high season like July. <laughs> Silo, the prices on vacation to go does not advertise haven prices. Uh, for your information, thank you, Silo. You're right. Uh, you can only find that really on the website for the cruise line. Or through your travel agent, and you make a fair point. Uh, I, we don't argue that at all, Silo. You're right, John Landry. Uh, uh, YC uh, Yacht Club. It's just like Haven, uh, just much cheaper. I paid forty two hundred dollars for me and my girlfriend, and it included drink package, spa package, butler, etc. You don't know someone is in Yacht Club unless they tell you. A uh, very good, John. Good point. Fair point. Um, haven't got a problem with that at all. Twenty one hundred dollars a person. Uh, for uh, say a week, one week cruise, three hundred bucks a day, all in, good value. That's a good value deal. Uh, I know that uh, that's the kind of value you can get on a Viking Ocean cruise as well, where only nine hundred thirty passengers on the entire ship. Everybody gets a balcony room, uh, it, all inclusive. Uh, also, you know, I think that's good value for what you're getting. Okay, um, and I agree, John. That uh, I think we're on the same page, or I hope we are. You know, if I book a balcony on the 12th level for my wife and I, wherever I get it, you know, if I get it on vacationsgo.com, doesn't matter. If I get it for 750 bucks, 700 bucks, uh, maybe not 425 like Seaside. Uh, obviously, that's an exception. But 
let, let's say I'm on uh, the you know a Hall America ship, a celebrity ship, and I'm paying uh, you know seven hundred dollars, seven fifty for the week. That's fifteen hundred for the two of us, uh, taxes and fees, tips. We're now at uh, you know two thousand bucks ballpark for the two of us. Now drink package, uh, specialty dining. You know we're we're up there. We're 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 catching you. We're not going to get to you, uh, but I can add the spa package. I can add all these extras, and I'll still be paying less than you're paying. But you're getting more. You deserve more. You paid more. You're getting more. You're going to have the butler service, concierge. You're going to have the special area. You're entitled to it. I haven't got a beef with that whatsoever. Uh, what I'm worried about and what I'm wondering about is, uh, uh, unlike a 2,500 passenger ship or 2,100 passenger ship like the Ooster Dam or the Konings Dam or anything like that, we're talking about larger ships, 5,000 people. And when they these brand new vessels come off the line, and about a third of that ship up at the top is just for the uh, the top end, most passengers now won't see it. They won't get the experience. And yet they were kind of sold the deal on the brochure. It was kind of advertised with all the video on the internet how beautiful this ship is. You're never going to see that part of the ship because you didn't pay for it. It's not advertised that you won't see it, but it's a reality when you get there. And um, you're on an observation deck, five people deep, two people deep, uh, leaving port, and all of a sudden you feel like you're in a massive, crowded shopping mall type environment, and you're not – getting what you thought you were getting and you're dropping two grand, three grand, 4,000 bucks, mom and dad and a couple of kids, five grand. And it ain't relaxing and it isn't quiet. It is mayhem. Uh, well, you know, if you open up the other third of that ship and just built it as one big place, you'd have taken 10, 15% of the strain off the rest of the decks and opened up the ship to all. But again, that's just speculation on my part. Uh, thoughts on my part, we won't know for years, really, until it really all comes out in the end. Uh, but we know what the reality is now, and you bring up a great point about what it is now. Uh, Terrence uh, saying, if my annual cruise was my only vacation, I sure as hell would book for the MSC Yacht Club, private restaurant, pool, bar, et cetera, to avoid the crowds. He said, well, there you go. And and the the, the cruise line is sort of saying to you, Terrence, <laughs> Terrence uh, yeah, look, uh, one cruise a year, uh, one every second year. Well, you, we'll sell you a cabin down here for uh, you know eight fifty, four nine fifty, seven fifty, but you're in the buffet, and if you want the steak, you got to pay extra for that. Or you drop that extra coin, and we'll put you up here where cruising what it used to be like. Uh, we'll we'll give you a cruise that your parents used to have. Uh, here it is. But let's be fair, our parents in 1985 went on the love boat or you know any cruise of that era um they got the bells and whistles because it was still the ocean liner mentality uh first class uh you know first class treatment now there was in some cases second and third class maybe but in the 80s by that point it was almost more like a singular thing bigger cabins smaller cabins but you were treated just right. Um, that experience doesn't exist anymore. The the the, uh, the waitressing staff in the buffet, they're only there to clean up the dirty dishes when they get around to it. Because when there are 1,500 people in that buffet at lunchtime and another 1,500 or 1,800 at dinner time, dishes are everywhere, dirty dishes. And now you as a passenger run into the situation where you're looking for a table to sit down on and Four out of five have dirty dishes on them because they haven't got around to cleaning them up. And now what's happening? Mom and dad are taking the dirty dishes from one table, putting them on another table with existing dishes to clean a table for themselves. This is happening on more and more of these packed cruise ships. And it's going to get to the point where passengers are going to say, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to an all-inclusive resort in Cancun because they won't seat me unless the table is cleared off. We're in a buffet. It's a free-for-all. And I don't want to pay $45 for me, my wife, and my two kids on top of that for dinner. That's 180 bucks more for dinner. No, I want it included. So these are the issues with the uh, packed cruise ships and bigger, you know, bigger cruise ships. Samantha Farmer, the best Royal Caribbean, the best is Royal Caribbean and their star class, your personal genie, does everything for you and goes with you everywhere. 
yes, you're paying for it. John Landry, we also don't have separate elevators. John, they did on the seaside. Uh, I don't know if you were on the seaside or not, but that's been a complaint. Uh, apparently, the seaside had four elevators and a couple were locked off for just the top end clients at the Yacht Club. I had a couple of viewers tell me that that's what they witnessed. Uh, if I'm wrong, uh, it, then I'm getting the information wrong, but I don't think I was. Silo, we are not rich in our 50s. No kids, having vacation in 10 years, just living it up. Nice, nice. Steaming Ben Silva, Silva, Steaming Bean saying, Silva, go for it. I say to. Randy Lucas saying to it. I'm saying to. Go for it. Debbie Manuel, Bruce, my brother. Uh, sorry, Bruce, may bother me if $100 more just so you can cut in front of me in line. But during cruise, I'm in my own world and it doesn't cross my mind. Debbie, it's all good. Uh, you know, if, if it isn't interfering with you, it probably won't interfere with me because I'm not a. I'm not a cruiser where I need to desperately get off the ship first because I'm on a 6 a.m. chartered boat to go sailing off. Every, no, I, I'm sleeping in. <laughs> I'm getting up when I get up. I'm eating when I'm eating. I'm in the spa when I'm in the spa. I go off the ship when I go off the ship. I, yeah, exactly. I'm easy going. I generally am easy going. <laughs> Kathy Butler, getting on the Disney ships via priority boarding gives you an advantage getting reservations. You have to sign up uh, for when you board. Mad dash to get them always fill up quickly. Good point, Kat. Thanks, Kathy, for explaining that to me. I appreciate that. Elizabeth Breen, you have to look at uh, you look have to look at it as the same for paying for VIP seating at a concert. How much is it worth to you? Right on. I I'm running. I get you, Judy Anstis. Hi, Bruce. Woohoo! Not uh, raining. It's not raining. Way to go, Judy. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Kathy Butler. Apparently, Davina. Does it better than Seaside? Question. Good to know. John, glad you enjoyed it. Have seen good reviews on Davina. Me too. I've heard good things, Davina, all the time. Good things. Not so on the uh, Seaside. Steaming Bean, why the devil are you wearing a Saskatchewan Rough Rider shirt? I will pay you $2 if you take it off. Steaming Bean, two bucks. You want to give me two? What am I, a stripper? Uh, and you're going to give me $2 uh, on my G string or something? I mean, two bucks. I mean, come on, Stephen. I'm worth more than that. You got it. You got to be kidding me. I had someone give me ten dollars already today, and they won't even take a medallion from me. I mean, two bucks to take my clothes off, Stephen. Uh, you got to pay, pal. I mean, you want to see my wife? Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars in super chat money. You will see my wife live on this channel today. But two bucks? No, that's not happening. No. <laughs> it's green. I wore green. You complained when I had my Stampeder shirt on, and it was red. Are you giving me those thumbs down? Are you the thumbs down giver? <laughs> Terrence, my wife and I have decided we do not like the larger ships with 4,000 and up passengers. Hence, going back to Holland America, 2,600 passengers in December. Good on you. Absolutely good on you. I, I hear you there. I enjoyed the Norwegian Jade more than the Epic. 21, 2,400 passengers versus 4,200. Absolutely loved it more. Uh, the Steaming Bean, Terrence, good plan. Kathy Butler, oh, Lord, fundraiser to see Bruce's shirt, to see Bruce shirtless. Oh, my gosh. The Steaming Bean, yep, fundraiser to see Bruce naked. Kathy Butler, Terrence, I am seeing the same. I think a mid-sized ship would be best for me as well. Steaming Bean says, I live in Saskatchewan, but I cheer for Ottawa. Oh, you poor bugger. Oh, what's wrong with you, Steaming Bean? Oh, man, you, you got a hard life. I tell you that right now. You got a hard life. You're cheering for Ottawa? <laughs> I should have said, you're living in northern Saskatchewan? <laughs> you know what, Stephen Bean? Life's hard all around. What can I say? Samantha, he needs a cruisefulltime.com shirt. Yeah, yeah, I need. That's right, Samantha. I need to wear your shirt to promote your website on my channel. That's what I got to do. Yeah, that would be great for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Joy number one, have cruised on both smaller and larger ships. Both have their pros and cons. Uh, just have to plan ahead on the big ships when you first get on to make sure you get your reservations in. Totally agree. If you can do it online in advance of the cruise, do that if you can. Do that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, get on the ship and uh, drop your bag off in your room. Put your valuables in your uh, vault and then head for the dining room if you want to make reservations or head to the specialty restaurant. Make that your first couple of hours of the to-do list for your cruise and you're set. You're set. Take the tour of the spots. what I do. 
check it out, see how the spa looks to you. If you want to buy a spa pass, if they offer you one, you decide on the spot after you see the spa and find out what's available. You bet. If you make, if you need to make reservations for the shows, make your reservations for your shows. Talk in advance, you and your travel partners, one or others, if you're a family, figure out what are we going to see and when are we going to see it? Because these are our tour stops. These are our onshore excursions. This is going to be our schedule. On the other hand, if you're really like a lot like me, more like me, you might only have a couple of priorities. Uh, the spa, that's my priority. And after that, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not even I'm not even reserving the dining room. No. I'll eat when I'm hungry. And if I'm hungry at uh, 7.30, I'll go to the dining room. If they got room for me, great. You don't have room for me? Forget about it. It's okay. I'll go somewhere else. And I'll walk around the ship. I'll walk to a special restaurant. It's Italian. Hey, I like Italian. You got room for me? No? That's okay. No problem. It's fine. I've got the buffet up there. I've got room service if I need it. I'll figure it out. Um, I'm not. It's not like a, a crushing blow to my ego and my life if I can't get in because I didn't reserve a month ago or the first day of the cruise because I'm winging it. This cruise, as all cruises, as it goes, easy going. I'm getting away from the stress. I'm getting away from the regiment of the regimented lifestyle. I'm cruising, baby. And I'm just taking it easy, and that's how I'm going to roll. But that's my eat. Might not be for you. I understand. Um, let's see here. Uh, Samantha, a, a steaming bean. He should wear a shirt from the Eastern teams in Canadian football. Oh, man. <sighs> steaming bean, There's. Yeah, I just can't go there. They're just so bad. They're just so <laughs> – Matt Byrne is here. Matt, uh, we like to travel in the uh, Star Class Suites on Royal Caribbean. Uh, we went to see what Symphony uh, was going to run a family of four, and it started at $45,000. That's right. And you can't get that room. It's already booked. I think it's booked for the first year. It's already sold out. It's an, isn't that amazing? It's incredible. I am not of that world. Uh, for some reason, uh, you know, at school, when I was in school, they didn't teach me the, the routine of, okay, here's what you do. You do this. You do this, and then when you're 50, you can book a $45,000 a week suite on a cruise ship that's two stories tall for your family. I never found that course, and I didn't find it in college either. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. I still don't know what cruise, what course you're supposed to take to get that cruise uh, deal either. I, I don't know what that one is. Something about hereditary, maybe. <laughs> Picking the right parents? I don't know what it is. I, I can't tell. Uh, <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Uh, Rob P. is saying, looks like smaller ships are a better choice. Got off the gem in February, and it was a fantastic experience in steerage. Crew was amazing. No issues at all. Bingo. There you go. Right on, Rob P. Thank you for that comment. Great. Love it. Samantha Farmer, yep. Matt, yep. And when paying that, you don't want to be treated the same I hear you. I hear you. Wendy Thompson, for 4200 bucks, we can do Viking again as past passengers. We get a discount. We did Amsterdam to Budapest in 2010. Next time, we think we're going to do an 8 to 10 a day and pre and post hotels. Yes. Excellent. Excellent idea. Wendy, that sounds exciting and wonderful. John Landry, no, it's not separate elevators. You have the ability with your key card to call an elevator to you, but all elevators are open to everyone. I personally wouldn't use it, but people do. Well, John, um, thank you for that. Um, but if you're using a key card to get the elevator, it's passing everyone else. Uh, so it's reserved for you. But I get it. Uh, the rest of the time, you know, it's always available. Uh, I just had a few folks comment to me on how long they were waiting for an elevator on the seaside. Um, just, just anyway, comments that I got, I'm just repeating. But I appreciate yours very much. Kathy, I think on MSC, everything was magnified because it was so many issues at once. You can ignore one or two things, especially if you feel they're trying to fix it. But service failure made it worse. Yeah, I, I've, I've had that so many times. So many comments. Just, yeah, all about that. Mighty Joy number one would rather improve the plumbing and food on a ship looking like the MSC Seaside than have to dress up some of those POC carnival ships. <laughs> 
<laughs> those carnival ships for what it's worth. Uh, thank you, Mighty Joy. <laughs> uh, Michelle uh, Lucas, uh, uh, Brucey Buddy uh, shirts. You could sell them. Uh, I'm actually thinking about it. I really am. I am thinking about merchandise. We call it, in the YouTube business, we call it merch. And I'm thinking about merch like uh, fridge magnets and uh, fridge magnets and maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, coasters and perhaps uh, maybe perhaps a hat, like a cap, perhaps some T-shirts, something for, you know, traveling with Bruce. I'm thinking about that. Um, there are companies that I can go through to, to do it. Uh, but again, I've been focusing on the channel, the channel, the channel, the product, the content, my viewers, the discussion, building this business up, and then going to there. Okay, let's get quickly go through these comments because I want to get to uh, I want to get to trivia. Uh, Richard Kornemaski saying hi, Bruce. Good job as usual. Thank you, Richard, and welcome back. Uh, Silo doesn't one of the other NCL ships have the cavern. Cavern Club with Beatles tribute band. How was it? Bliss has won. I've heard good things from a few uh, people that I've heard about it. The Steaming Bean. What are the three ships you have not sailed on? Allures you. I haven't got time. Steaming Bean to talk to you about that. Uh, Bob Hollis. Hi, Bruce. 70 in Atlanta. Hi, Bob. Mighty Joy. MCL Epic also has the Cavern Club. Uh, very good. I don't recall it when I was on it, but it probably has it now. Silo. It's called Work Your You Know What Off for Microsoft for a few years. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Way to go, Silo. Steaming Bean, Bruce, I was just uh, uh, gouging, uh, going to offer you that $45,000 room, but since you don't want it, that's right, Steaming Bean. You can't make me go into that room. You can't You can't send me $45,000. <laughs> uh, but I'm not taking my shirt off for two bucks. Not a chance, uh, Steaming Bean, not a chance. Silo, two dislikes. What the? <laughs> Kathy, the exchange of ideas and info here is priceless. You guys rock. Matt. Burn. Most are CEOs in star class and very successful business owners. Yeah, they probably are, and uh, they made they made their money the hard way. They worked for it, and God bless them for it. I love it, and uh, it's what makes the world a great place. Let's play trivia. How about some trivia? Okay, lighten the load a little bit, lighten the mood. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you guys the first question today. A trivia question. Get ready. Get your fingers ready. Okay. Uh, anybody's giving me thumbs ups, please give me thumbs ups. Would love to have those. Uh, thank you for all you who are watching today and enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying it. And also the super chat. I got the one already today. Thank you for the super chat today. Any others coming? I would appreciate it too. Let's go trivia. I want to know the last three ships. You can you can you can just answer one if you know one or two or three. It doesn't matter. But I want you to tell me the name the name or names of the last three ocean liners that held the record for the fastest crossing on the Atlantic Ocean. Now, these are ocean liners. I'm not talking about speed boats or anything like that. I want to know um, what the names of the last three ships were to hold the blue ribbon crossing the North Atlantic. Go. Anybody got that answer? Uh, I'll give you hints if I need to, um, but at the moment, I thought I would just ask the question and see if any of you can pop the question on here. Uh, Richard Koromaski is fast but wrong. He's saying U.S. America. No, no, there was the ship was not called U.S. America, but you're very close. A silo got it right. Uh, Richard, I think you know the name of the ship, but you kind of gave it to me in a different way. Silo has it, SS United States. Correct. That's one of the three. Uh, the SS United States, Charlie Baum got it as well. Uh, Richard's going, whoops. <laughs> uh, the SS United States uh, held the record in 1952. It was the last and current holder of that record for an ocean liner, 1952. Uh, Bob Hollis is guessing Queen Victoria. Nope, not, not none of the three ships is the Queen Victoria. Richard Koromaski, it's docked here in Philly, your hometown, Richard. It's docked in Philly. And unfortunately, it is in effect an empty hull. I mean, there's virtually nothing left in it, um, but it's still sitting there. In 1952, the SS United States set the record going eastbound July 3rd to July 7th, 1952. Three days, 10 hours, 40 minutes. Uh, at 35.59 knots an hour, at about 15% of that number. It's about 41, 42 miles an hour. 
Uh, let's see, anybody else been commenting? Uh, Sylvan Forest, France and QE2. No, sir, neither one. Silo, the French one, uh, could be. Uh, don't look it up on the internet, though. Don't be cheating now. Um, the, uh, the SS United States was so fast, and that trip was so quick, that the hull, the front of the ship, the paint peeled off from the water, from the friction of the salt water on the hull of that ship for that three days, 10 hours and 40 minutes, it in effect ripped the paint off the hull of the ship at the waterline. That's how fast that ship was going. The stress was unbearable. Uh, the, they did it one time. <laughs> they uh, rode it back the other direction, uh, went from uh, England back to the US, set the record that way too at 34.51 knots. Um, and then they never sailed it that fast again. They only did it one time to prove that it could be done. The ship was designed uh, in, in co cooperation with the U.S. Navy to be actually a troop carrier in the event of war. How to get 15,000 troops from one point to another point fast and not be detected by aircraft or submarine. But uh, within a couple of years of the ship being built, it was all over. Uh, its needs were no longer needed by the military, uh, and uh, to move trips, uh, troops a long distance after that, you were using uh, big planes, uh, jet planes, and uh, the ships. The ships' needs were no longer wanted by the U.S. Navy. Uh, the U.S. and the United States continued to sail until 1969 as a passenger ship, uh, but it didn't cross the Atlantic at that speed. <laughs> but in '69, it was all over. Uh, the, the ship was in effect running at losses and was docked and never sailed again commercially. I uh, still have two ships I'm looking for. Richard Kormaski, USS United States, built during the Cold War, had a secret propeller and, uh, and covered when it was in dry dock, was designed for military use if needed. Pamela Jordan, gotta go now. Bye. See you next time. See you, Pamela. Silo, now that was the name I couldn't think of. Normandy. Good one, Sylvan. Normandy is the ship. Sylvan, you were first. You're there. Thank you. Charlie Baum said he sailed on the ship in 1965. Sylvan, uh, you're right on the Normandy. That is the second ship. That is the second last ship. Sorry, that is the third last ship to hold the record. There's one in between that held the record. Uh, a silo has it. And, uh, Queen Mary, there he is. He nailed it. So we've got the uh, USS, the SS United States in 1952. The Queen Mary, August of 1938, held the record. So she held the record for 14 years. And, of course, the Second World War didn't hurt. Uh, you know, five years, no sailing. Um, it took three days, 20 hours, 42 minutes, and at 31.69 knots is how fast the Queen Mary did it. And it beat out the Normandy from France, which set the record in 1937, the year before, August the 4th to the 8th. Three days, 22 hours, seven minutes at 31.2 knots an hour. So those are the three last record holders of the Blue Ribbon. Um, and the USS uh, United States is the current record holder. No modern cruise liner has decided to take it away, has tried to take it away. I don't think they can. I don't think they're fast enough. Um, Wendy Thomas, Thompson, first ship, uh, Br Britannis in the first, first ship, Brittany. 1991, Silo, not Queen Mary. Richard Kormaski, Titanic, no. <laughs> oh, Richard Kormaski, oh, the gigantic, no. <laughs> Silo, the guy who designed the USS United States, designed ships during World War II. Correct, he did. All right, well, that's the trivia on that one. I've got another one for you, folks. Uh, let's see, I've got three more trivia questions, so let's get through them here. Uh, I'm going to ask you... Um, the first one is not a cruise ship trivia question. It's actually an airline trivia question. It's about airplanes. It's about flying. It is this question. All right, get ready, folks. There are 30 answers, 30 correct answers, okay? And I will knock off the correct ones and yell them out and let you know how you're doing. There are 30 answers, all correct, that you can guess. And here's the question. What U.S. cities... Can you fly to Heathrow or Gatwick Airport 2 on a direct nonstop flight from which cities? I don't care uh, what the name of the airport is. You only have to guess what cities in the United States can you take an airplane ride direct to either Heathrow or Gatwick. 
And there are 30 of them. Can you guess them? Let's see what we have. I'm looking for the answers. We should have them here shortly. And uh, let's go. Find out which of the 30 cities you guys can come up with. Uh, and we'll kind of take it from there. No cheating. Don't go on the internet. Just take your shots and let's go. Mighty Joy number one is saying Fort Lauderdale. And I'm saying you're right. That is correct. Um, New York from Richard Karmaski, dead on. You got it, buddy. Uh, Atlanta, Bob Hollis, he is correct. Atlanta is definitely on that list. Uh, New York City, Mighty Joy, we got it. Seattle from Charlie Baum, yes, Seattle is on there. Uh, SAS, uh, Nina, what is SAS? Uh, give me a better description of SAS, please. Uh, Richard Karmaski, Boston, that is correct. Um, we've got Sylvan Forrest is saying, Bahaba, Maine. First incorrect guess, courtesy of <laughs> Sylvan. <laughs> we got Richard Kormaski saying, Dallas, I'm saying you're on it. Yes, sir, Dallas is one of them. Uh, Seattle's been guessed. New York City has been guessed. Steaming Bean, uh, Wendy Thompson, Titanic, United States, and Lusitania. No, no, Wendy, the game is over. We, we got that one done. Judy Anstis, Miami. Correct. Miami is on that list. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, Silo, Anchorage. Nope, not a direct flight from Anchorage. Uh, not on this quiz. Sylvan Forest, Miami. We've got it. Uh, Steaming Bean, Los Angeles. Yes, we've got LA. So LA is the second longest flight, direct flight from the U.S. in this question, in this uh, quiz. Uh, sorry, thought you asked about airlines. Nina Frank, we've got Richard Kornmaski, Sylvan, he needs a cigar. <laughs> Maybe he needs a rum and coke. Kind of sharpened the brain a little there. It's all good. Silo is uh, Anchorage again. Uh, Mighty Joy, Orlando. Yes, Orlando is on the list. That's another one gone. Silo is saying, whoops. Uh, Richard Kornmaski, O'Hara. Uh, O'Hara. Uh, I think I know what city you're talking about with regard to O'Hara. Um, I think you're really telling me it's O'Hare. And if you're telling me it's O'Hare, you're talking about Chicago and Chicago is on the list. I'll give you Chicago because I'm in a good, I'm in a giving mood. I'm giving mood. Uh, Bob Hollis, Charlotte. Correct. You got it. Charlotte is also on the list of 30 cities that you can fly direct from the United States to either Heathrow or Gatwick. Uh, Steaming Bean, San Francisco. You got it. San Francisco is on the list. It is the fourth longest flight. Uh, Bob Hollis is asking Charlotte. We got it. We got San Francisco. Okay. Silo, Honolulu. No, not direct. Not nonstop. No. Uh, Mighty Joy asked Dallas. We've got Dallas. Uh, Nina Frank is asking about Miami. We've got Miami. Uh, we're already at Miami. We still have a bunch. You guys have guessed four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. You've guessed 12. There are 18 more answers. What city from the United States can you fly nonstop from to either Heathrow in London or Gatwick in London? You've guessed Boston. You've guessed New York. You've guessed Chicago, Charlotte, Atlanta, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Dallas, Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. There are 18 more to go with. No cheating. Let's see what we can do here. Sylvan Forrest is saying Houston. I'm saying, yes, sir. Houston is on the list. Uh, there it is right up there. Where else are we going? Richard Karmaski, Denver. Denver is correct. It's on there. Um, uh, what do we got? Mighty Joey, Tampa. Correct. Tampa's right. Uh, the Steaming Bean saying Washington, D.C. Correct. Washington, D.C. is on the list. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, LAX. We got Los Angeles, Nina. Uh, Bob Hollis, Detroit. Yes, Detroit is on the list. Uh, Silo, uh, Washington, D.C., correct. We already got it. Uh, Silo is saying Fargo, laughing out loud. Can we can we go from Fargo? No, can't go from Fargo. Not Fargo. <laughs> I said Fargo. Fargo. No, no Fargo. Uh, Bob Hollis, Salt Lake City, correct. That's another one. You can fly Salt Lake City to London. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Richard Kornmaski is asking about Las Vegas. Nevada, and that is correct. You can go Las Vegas to London direct on a flight. Debbie is uh, coming in at Denver. We just got it. Uh, Sylvan Forest, West Palm Beach. <laughs> no, 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 Sylvan. Uh, these maybe might be airports you want to fly to London to, 
but they're not available at this present time. The steaming bean, Nashville. Nope, no, not, not, not Nashville. Silo is asking about Spokane. No, not Spokane. No, sorry. No Spokane. Still got about uh, 14 to go. A uh, bunch of them. Here's one. Uh, the steaming bean is saying Minneapolis. And you are correct, sir. Minneapolis is on the list. Richard is asking Seattle. I think we've already got Seattle on the list. Uh, I think we got it already. Just double checking. Yeah, we've already got Seattle. Uh, I'll start giving you hints if necessary, folks. Uh, the longest, uh, there are still three cities on the West Coast you haven't given me that fly nonstop to London. Three more from the West Coast. Bob Hollis is asking about Cincinnati. No, sir. Cincinnati is not on the list. Um, I still have one, two, three, four, four cities on the East Coast you haven't guessed. Three on the West, on the East. Let's see what we're doing here. Steaming Bean, Detroit. We got Detroit. Portland, Oregon from Silo. Uh, yeah, we've got, uh, we do not have, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just check, 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 check. I'm checking, I'm checking. No, no, Portland does not make the list. I'm sorry. Um, Indianapolis, we have San Diego. Charlie Baum, you got it. That's the longest flight from the continental U.S. Uh, Bob Hollis, Portland, no. John Landry, Newark. Yes, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Silo is asking Sacramento. No, sir. Uh, San Francisco has already been a, a guest and answered correctly. Nina, we've already got San Francisco. Debbie is asking Sacramento. Nope. Uh, I've got two cities left on the West Coast uh, still to be guessed. Uh, and I still have one, two, three on the East Coast to be guessed. So far, the East Coast, Boston, New York, Newark, Washington, uh, let's see, uh, Chicago, yeah, and Charlotte. So there's uh, Miami also has been guessed. So I'm still waiting for a couple more on the East Coast. Uh, what do we got here? Judy is saying, uh, is asking Oakland. Judy is correct. Oakland, California. There's one city left in California is the hint. One city left in California. It's kind of, uh, it's on the coast. It's it's kind of on the coast. I mean, you look at the map and get, Steaming Bean just got it. Uh, San Jose. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, West Coast as I'm going to give you. Uh, Bob Hollis is asking about Philadelphia. Correct. Uh, Philly was the fourth shortest flight to London. That is correct. Uh, San Jose has been guessed. Uh, John Wayne in Los Angeles. John Wayne Airport in Los Angeles. No, we're done with that. Uh, I've got uh, now a one, two cities left on the east side, east coast side. Uh, and then I've got a few cities kind of in the middle, uh, guys, uh, in the middle. But you're coming there. We're down to one, two, uh, three, four, five cities left to go. Five left to go. Uh, you guys are doing well. Um, let's see here. Uh, I have one city in the Eastern time zone. I have another city in the Eastern time zone. I've got, uh, a city in the, uh, Western time zone, like the LA Western time zone. And then I've got a couple of cities more in the central time zone, sort of, kind of. Houston has been guessed. Dallas has been guessed. St. Louis is not on the list. Um, St. Louis, not on the list. Uh, five to go. Um, See if I can give you any more hints. Uh, some more hints. Uh, um, let me think a minute. Uh, this city uh, that I'm thinking about in the east uh, is in a Confederate state. <laughs> How about that? A, con a Confederate city, not a Union city. Thinking Civil War. Kansas City, no. Uh, nice try, Joyce. Nice try. Uh, w welcome to the channel. Not Kansas City. Uh, but you're, uh, you're not too far off. You're certainly in the right time zone. I'll tell you that for one of them for sure. Uh, one of the cities is a coastal city, but it's not on the East coast and it's not in the West coast. Where would it be? It's a coastal city. Uh, let's see if anybody gets that. That's a hint, you know, um, you folks guessed Dallas, you folks guessed Houston. I got another city in Texas for you. I'm looking for another city in Texas. See if you can find it. Baltimore from Sylvan Forest. Bingo. You got it there. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see her. Um, Nina Frank. Uh, no, Bruce. Now you have to start to give hints. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Charles Jordan. Atlanta. We've already got it. Uh, we've already got uh, Atlanta. We have one city left in the eastern time zone. It's in a Confederate state. Um, let's see here. Uh, Bob Hollis is guessing New Orleans. Bingo. That is a coastal city. Not on the east or west coast. Correct. New Orleans it is. The steaming bean is saying Galveston. No, sir. 
Uh, Austin is coming in from P. Massey, uh, and Austin is uh, correct. Austin is the Texas City. We've got, uh, I think we got two left. Uh, let's see who we got. To. Wichita, no. New Orleans, John, you're right. Uh, just, just a little late. Okay, we got two cities left. One on the East Coast uh, in a Confederate state, and one uh, in the West, in the Western time zone. Uh, let's see here. Raleigh, Sil Silo's got Raleigh. We're there. Thank you. Uh, that is the last one on the East side. We have one city left, people. This city has over 5 million people living in it. 5 million people. It has an NFL football team. It has an, a baseball team, Major League Baseball team. It's got a hockey team. It's got a basketball team. Uh, it is uh, in the West time zone. Um, what else can I tell you? It, it has one flight only to London uh, uh, going out of it. Uh, it's not Oklahoma City. Nope. Um, it's, it's I was going, woo-hoo, guest, we're all uh, St. <laughs> ZL. The steaming steaming bean is guessing St. ZL. Uh, Zane's Louis. No, not St. Louis, sir. We've already had that guess. Uh, this is west of St. Louis. Uh, Oakland, already been guessed. It is south of Oakland and east. I'm giving it. I'm going to every city you guess from here out, I'm going to give you directions to point where it's headed. But Silo stopped it all dead in its tracks. Phoenix, Arizona is the guess. We've got it. Let me read the winning list to you guys one more time. It's it's all done. We got it. Well done, everybody. Boston, New York City, Newark, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, Detroit, Raleigh, Chicago, Charlotte, Minis Minneapolis, Atlanta, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Tampa, New Orleans, Denver, Dallas, Seattle, Houston, Salt Lake City, Austin, Las Vegas, Phoenix, San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, Los Angeles, and San Diego. That was this clue right here. That was this one right here. Well done. That wasn't too bad. 30 came in pretty quick. All right. For you cruisers out there, <laughs> is anybody out there a cruiser? Uh, here is a, a trivia question uh, for you guys as cruisers. Um, and uh, I don't want to call it a trick question, so I'm going to um, I'm going to try to to clarify this question for you to make it a little easier. <clears throat> uh, P. Matt Asilo saying, "Who knew there were so many?" Debbie saying, "Exhausted after that, I might need a nap." What about me? Uh, okay, here is the question: Name name the thirteen island countries of the Caribbean. Now, cruise ships, you know, they go to these places, so. Uh, you'll know all of these by name, but name for me the 13 island nations of the Caribbean. All right, fire away. Let's see what we get, and I'll I'll let you know how quick we're getting to the bottom of the list. There are 13 island nations in the Caribbean, and uh, the names are familiar to all of us uh, as uh, as cruise ship fans. And here come the guesses. Uh, John Landry, he says there's an island called Nassau. I never heard of that island. Never heard of that country, Nassau. I've heard of the city, uh, but not the island uh, nation. The steaming bean, Trinidad and Tobago. Correct. That is one of them right there. Uh, Bob Hollis is telling me there's an island nation of Puerto Rico. No, there's no island nation called Puerto Rico. No, sorry. Eh. Silo is saying Bonaire, Curacao, uh, Aouba. <laughs> Bonaire, Curacao, Aouba. Uh, wrong, wrong, and wrong again. <laughs> you might be talking about British Virgin Islands. You might be talking about uh, islands that are part of nations that are not nations unto themselves. And that's the trick part of this question. That's why Puerto Rico does not count. Puerto Rico is part of the United States of America, yet it is right now operating as a third world country, which is a crying shame, but it is a reality. Try to plug in your shaver in Puerto Rico. It might or might not work, depending on the time of day. Uh, Charles Jordan, St. Martin. Very good, very wrong. St. Martin is not its own country. It is a territory of Denmark and France. 
for the Netherlands and France. It's not its own uh, country. John Landry, St. Kitts and Nevis, correct. St. Kitts and Nevis is its own island nation. Very good. Uh, Steaming Bean, St. Martin, no. Uh, S. Swan, Bermuda, no. Bermuda is a United Kingdom territory. It is not a country unto itself. Bermuda. Uh, Cuba, P. Massey, you got it. Cuba is its own island country. Silo, Jamaica, correct. That is its own island, island country. Thank you. Charlie Bomb, Grenada, bingo, you got it. Grenada is its own country. Uh, John Landry, the Bahamas, correct. The Bahamas is its own island country. No nation. Um, U.S. Virgin Islands, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, U.S. Virgin Islands is a uh, U.S. territory. It's a uh, you got the U.S. flag. Uh, no, <laughs> the Cayman Islands. Nope, U.K. protectorate. I live there. Part of the the Queen is on the money. The the Queen's face is on the five dollar bill. Nope, it's uh, Cayman Islands is not its own nation. John Landry, Saint Lucia, Saint Lucia. Yes, correct. It is on the list. Thank you, um, Sylvan uh, Forest. Are you cheating, Sylvan, or what? Uh, or are you just busy? He's saying Haiti. Uh, he's correct. He is saying uh, Dominican Republic. He is correct. Um, let's see. St. Martin, no. St. Martin, no. Bahamas, already guessed. Martinique, nope. Guadalupe, nope. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, yes. You are correct. I've got two left. Three left, actually. Uh, let's see what we got here. Aruba, nope. Steaming bean. Donald Trump spoke to the president of Puerto Rico. He did. He spoke to the president of Puerto Rico. Isn't that its own country? No. Part of the United States of America. Joyce Stoneberger, St. John. That's a city, I believe. Joyce. Uh, nice try. Uh, got it. Silva, Silo, Silo saying got it. Grenada then. We've already got Grenada, but yes. Oh, shoot. Debbie is saying. <laughs> Aruba, no. Joyce, uh, Grand Cayman, nope. That is a protectorate. Uh, Bob Hollis is asking, guessing uh, Turks, Caicos. Uh, let me look at my list and double check. Uh, no, no. Turks and Caicos is actually protectorate as well. Um, Sylvan Forest, Antigua and Barbuda, correct, sir, correct. Uh, Saint Lucy. <laughs> Uh, you mean St. Lucia, and it's been guessed. You're right. It's been guessed. Turks and Caicos. No, not Turks and Caicos. I've got two left. I have two island nations left. Dominica from Sylvan Forest. Uh, correct, sir. You got it. There's one left, folks. Uh, Kathy Butler is learning so much geography on this show. So much. Who knew ships go to places? Who knew? Uh, the steaming bean. That was a joke. Trump referred to him as the president. He is. A, I know you're right. I, I agree with you. You're bang on, steaming bean. He referred to him as the president of, uh, yeah, of of uh, Puerto Rico. The busy man got a lot on his mind. Uh, one country left, folks. Name the 13 island nations of the Caribbean. There's one left. Charlie Baum saying Saint Vincent. No, Sylvan Forest. Lucy is my snake's name. Sorry. <laughs> Soul Fully Music is guessing Cuba. Welcome, Soul Fully Music. Already been guessed. Dylan LaRue is here. Is it French or Dutch? <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, here are the guesses that are correct. Here are the 12 correct guesses. We have one left. So far, the Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Antigua and Barbuda, uh, St. Saint, uh, Saint Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Great group, by the way, those guys. Uh, Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago. Those are all the correct guesses. Uh, we have one left to get. Jamaica, we've already got. Um, uh, we're looking for one island nation uh, in the Caribbean uh, that uh, that is left to be guessed. And I'm curious if any will get it. Um, Silo is, I think, trying to guess Belize by going Bal Thighs. Uh, Bob Hollis, St. Bart's. Nope, that's a protectorate. Again, uh, another territory. Um, let me think a minute. Uh, heart. It's a small nation, obviously. It's very small. Small population, uh, but a popular tourist destination. Very popular. You can go here on a cruise. Um, you can go here on a uh, all-inclusive 
Um, Montserrat. No, it's not Montserrat. Uh, Ang Anguilla. Anguilla. Betsy is guessing Anguilla. It's not Anguilla uh, either. No. Um, one to go. One to go. Um, when I first heard it years ago, I thought it was a British protectorate. It was. It is part of the Commonwealth of the United Kingdom. So this is a country part of the Commonwealth, like Jamaica is part of the Commonwealth. And uh, P. Massey just popped in there with Barbados. There it is. P. Massey has got Barbados. Well done. That's the list. Barbados finished it off. Well done, you guys. Okay. One more trivia question for you, and then this show's over. <laughs> I hope you're having a good time. Hope you're giving me thumbs ups. Uh, thank you for the super chat today. Uh, someone sent me a super chat today, and I thank you very much. Uh, 31 likes, two dislikes. Yeah, not bad. It's part for the course. Uh, let's see what we can do with this last one. Here we go. This is the last uh, trivia question of the day. And uh, let's see what we've got for you guys. Okay. Carnival Cruise Lines. How well do you know Carnival Cruise Lines? Okay. Here we go. I want you guys to just give me the name of every carnival ship right now. I've got 25 of them. And uh, if you come up with one I haven't got that's sailing, I'll give it to you as an extra. But talk to me. Tell me the names of the uh, ships in the fleet of Carnival Cruise Lines. I don't want the Holland America ships. I don't want the Princess ships. I don't want Cuna. Just Carnival. All right, here we go. Bob Hollis is starting us off with the Carnival Dream, and he is correct. The Carnival Dream is on the list, and I've got it right there. Okay, who else have we got? Here they come. Here they come. Pride, Triumph, Magic. Correct, correct, correct. Pride. There we go. There's Pride. Uh, there's Triumph. There's Magic. Let me just get my pen going here. Uh, make sure I don't miss anybody. Glory. Uh, glory. Currently sailing is correct. Currently sailing is, I think we're going with, uh, let's see here, Joyce. Sensation. The sensation is correct. I'm just looking for it on my list. There it is. Sensation. Who else we got? Liberty from Debbie Emanuel. Yes, Debbie, you got it. Um, Liberty. Liberty also from John Landry. Steaming Bean is saying magic. We just got it. Um, Nina Frank is saying Vista. Correct. We've got the Vista. Uh, let's see here. I don't do Carnival. I sailed Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so much. Joyce, Fascination. Yes. The Fascination is another ship. Uh, Bob Hollis, Liberty. We already have it, I believe. Uh, yes, we've already got Liberty. A celebration from Joyce. Celebrate good times. Come on. Celebration, celebration. Uh, it is a correct answer. I'm just looking for it. Uh, celebration, celebration. Where is it, Bruce? Um, for whatever reason, I don't see it on my list, but I know it's a correct answer, uh, and I'm giving it to you. Um, let's continue on. Who else have we got here? Vista, we've got a uh, celebration. Fantasy from uh, from Kathy. Uh, fantasy, yes, correct. Thank you. Um, Vista, we have victory. We've got someone guessing victory. Have we got victory already? Uh, we got it now. Victory is good. Uh, let's see here. Who else are we going with? Horizon, Bob Hollis. That's the ship to come. I'm giving you that. We're just about to have that one. Uh, the Breeze. Yes, The Breeze is on the list, too. Thank you. Steaming Bean is saying The Driftwood. The Carnival Driftwood cruise ship. Classic. Classically wrong. <laughs> Bob Hollis is guessing Sunshine. And Bob Hollis is correct. The Sunshine is on the list. There's the horizon. I have it. Uh, imagination. Joyce is asking and saying, and I'm saying you are right. The imagination is on the list. Um, miracle. Oh, Dylan is saying miracle uh, with an M E R. It's okay. I got gotcha. you. I'm giving it to you. Miracle. I got it. I know you're saying miracle. Uh, Silo is saying conqueror or conquest? Question mark. 
conqueror or conquest? It's conquest. Correct, sir. Dylan LaRue, miracle. Thank you, dear. Kathy Butler, splendor. Yes, the splendor is another one. Uh, Sunshine has been guessed, I believe. Um, I, I think so. Yes, it has. And uh, uh, John is saying the dream, uh, the dream, the dream, the dream, the dream. Have we already guessed the dream? Uh, yeah, guessed the dream already. Ecstasy is another guess coming in. Correct. That's another one. Valor from John Landry. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. Kathy Butler, the spirit. The spirit. The spirit. Uh, I thought that was another ship. Wasn't that a spirit? Where's the spirit on my list? <laughs> Where's the spirit in my face? Uh, I thought there was a spirit. Is that a retired ship? I, I, I'm not seeing it at the moment. Uh, Silo saying, hey, it floats. <laughs> Uh, Joyce is saying, you know, my first cruise I went on uh, was on the Jubilee, but I think it's retired, and I, I think you're right. Um, let's get your Destiny. There's another guest for the Destiny coming in just now. Uh, destiny, Destiny. Um, boy, I, I'm looking for that one, too, and I'm not seeing it. Oh, destiny. I'm sure it's on there. It's I, I'm sure there's a Destiny. I'm giving it to you. Uh, ship on a stick. Ship on a stick. From the steaming bean, um, inspiration, uh, sensation from Nina Frank. Inspiration and sensation. We've got sens sensation. Inspiration is right here. I've got that off the list. Let me tell you how many are left. I'm showing, I think I'm showing one, two, three, four, four to go. Four to go. Um, elation. Betsy Lane is asking about the elation. That's one of them, and um, uh, Magic and Pride, and I think both have been guessed. Let me just double check. Magic and Pride have been guessed. There are, there are one, two, three left, three left. Emmanuel, thanks so much for the fun today, everyone. Enjoy St. Patrick's Day and stay safe. Have a great rest of the weekend, Bruce and the gang. Thank you, Debbie. There are three left. I will tell you that they are one name only. I will tell you, <laughs> um, one of them starts with a P. I uh, wonder if that'll help. Freedom is a guess. Freedom is correct. That's one of them. There's two left. One of them starts with a P. One of them starts with an L. Two ships left for Carnival. One starts with a P. One starts with an L. And uh, see if any of you want to guess those two as we get ready to wrap this show up on Carnival Cruise Ships. Let's see. The Pride. Guessing the Pride, not the Pride. Uh, Poseidon. The Carnival Poseidon. That is the famous ship from 1972. No, no, not the Poseidon. Paradise. Correct. It is the Paradise. And they're guessing the Liberty. It's not the Liberty. We've already got it if we've already had it. There's another ship starting with the letter L that uh, is on Carnival. And I'm waiting for it. It's the last one. The letter L, Carnival Cruise Ship, not the legend, not the lifeboat. No. <laughs> the legend. There it is. Frank got it. Frank got it. The legend. Here are the names I had on this answer sheet. They were <coughs> The Breeze, Liberty, Conquest, Magic, Dream, um, Miracle, Ecstasy, Paradise, Elation, Pride. Fantasy, sensation, fascination, splendor, freedom, sunshine, glory, triumph, horizon, valor, imagination, victory, vista, legend, inspiration. There's a new one coming. It's going to come out next year in Long Beach. It's going to sail in uh, Mexico. What's the name of that one going to be? Anybody know? Anybody know the name of the new ship that's being built right now? It's a Vista-class ship. It'll be based in Long Beach, California, starting next year. Any guesses? I've already talked about that ship. Were you paying attention? Uh, Panorama. Betsy Lane, you got it. It's the Panorama. That'll hold 4,000 passengers. Big, big ship. Coming next fall, I think next November, something like that, a year and a bit. Yep, there you go. Okay, that's it. That's it for our, our, uh, our uh, trivia today. 
Hope you had fun with that. I enjoyed it. Uh, hope you had a good time on the show today. Thanks for all the thumbs ups today. Um, I know we're up to, uh, what is it now? 36 on the upside. Thank you for 36 thumbs ups today, you guys. A couple of downers, no big deal. And uh, all the comments today about everything about cruise ships. We covered a lot. I really enjoyed it. I love it when you guys interact and talk about uh, your thoughts and what you know, what you hear, what you've heard. I uh, love it. Uh, it's fantastic. Betsy Lane, plus five in Hamilton. Got you beat. We're plus 10 here. It's fantastic. Fun show, Bruce. Thank you, Silo. Thank you, everyone, for coming by today. Sylvan, time's for a rum and coke. Time for a rum and coke and a cigar. Thanks, Bruce. See you Monday. I'm on Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern. All next week, Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern. I'm still thinking of an 8 o'clock show Tuesdays and Thursdays, unless I run out of juice. <laughs> and having a great time. Uh, enjoyed all of your company today. Thanks for the super chat today. Thanks for the company. Have a great weekend. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks so much for coming by today on my Saturday show. We had fun today, I hope, and we'll see you Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern, on the next edition of uh, Traveling with Bruce on uh, YouTube on Traveling with Bruce. Thank you so much. See you, Nina. You guys take care. Talk to you Monday. Bye-bye.